Well, let's talk about their form heading into this. So, because like I really don't expect, I expect the second leg to be vastly different. I don't know exactly what different means. It could mean um, Real Madrid come away with a victory because they end up exploding the space as Liverpool chase the tie. It could mean that Liverpool, God forbid, really go into another gear and take advantage of Real Madrid's fatigue. And that's something that I do worry about fatigue, by the way, um, which I think we'll, we'll get to. But um, so they come into this game after like they so we had the classical in between these two legs and they had Aston Villa. So they won that game 2-1 um, in part thanks to a 91st minute game winner by Trent Alexander-Arnold. Otherwise, that would have been a draw, which further would be a disaster to their already disastrous um, league campaign, which mathematically is done and dusted, but now they're ch- chasing that Champions League spot. So they went into that game starting Fabinho, Wijnaldum, Milner in midfield, and uh, Salah, Firmino, and Jota up, up top. And uh, the back four is is what we what we saw against them. So how much of that... Um, do we do we care about do we care about any of the, anything from that game? That I mean, it's just it's kind of just like a little thing that they had to deal with in between two major games. But do, what do, what do what takeaways do we have from that game? So what I found interesting about that Aston Villa versus Liverpool is that it is like a very standard Liverpool game in the Premier League this season. They 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 outshot Villa by twenty three shots to nine. They were the ones dominating keeping the opponent in their box and everything, they had the better chances. But who scored the first goal? It's Aston Villa because of an isolated incident involving Liverpool's back line. And and this is, to me, kind of the theme with Liverpool this season. Even if they press you well, even if they create chances... There's always that mistake in the back line that leads to that leads to a goal. So, and this is the way I kind of visualize this return leg. Like even if Liverpool uh, managed to outpress and outscore Real Madrid, it's hard to see a scenario where uh, Real Madrid doesn't score with this back line at least one, and that's and one is kind of all they need. So. That's so at least the Aston Villa game kind of showed that yes, that Liverpool is still there. That Liverpool that will still concede the odd goal, uh, despite dominating, is still there. Uh, the other things that I noticed, um, I was hoping to see a bit more of that 4 2 3 1 uh, that we saw versus Arsenal and didn't really get to see it. Uh, it also just gives me an insight of like who will start. Uh, on Wednesday because uh, Mane was rested against Villa. So at this point, uh, Jota is the most dangerous forward in Liverpool's line right now. Salah will start because Salah and Mane is rested. So I kind of expect those three to start. Uh, The question uh, after this Villa game uh, is whether Klopp will once again go for the 4-3-3, which he keeps trying, or if he will go for the 4-2-3-1. So similar question to last uh, to last week, will it be Firmino or Wijnaldum who will play? That's kind of, uh, and that's kind of my takeaways from, from the Aston Villa game. And, oh, well, and the other takeaway is, yeah, these days Liverpool cannot really conserve their energies in, in these games either. Like in previous seasons, Liverpool had these situations where they got an early lead and then they could spend the rest of the game just like managing energy, conserving energy and and not uh, yeah, and not having to speed up too much, but these days it's impossible for them. They also had uh yeah, they also had to keep up full speed until the end of the game in order to uh in order to win it. So they're also going to be maybe not as exhausted as Real Madrid, but still kind of exhausted. Yeah, I do think, and that's worth pointing out, because as much as I see this game as, and this is kind of just like, I'm building off the last two games, right? So against Liverpool and and against Barcelona especially is when you really noticed it, because I think there was there was criticism, and I, and I was one of the critical ones of Real Madrid's defensive performance against Barcelona. I also was understanding of the fact that, <clears throat> you know, Everything after the game that Zidane was talking about was like fatigue and like we were just done. We were toast. We were gassed. And there was also the rain factor and like all that. So I will be a little bit lenient with like some of the the amount we let Barcelona's runners and cutters 
just go between the lines and have freedom and get the ball in these dangerous positions. We didn't really do that against Liverpool. We were much better defensively against Liverpool, but we allowed Barca those those avenues. And I worry that, you know, if fatigue is the excuse, you know, we're not magically going to be more energized for the Liverpool game. And we also have further injuries now. But um, so I kind of like, in my mind, I'm preparing for something like we're going to seed possession. Phil put that interesting... Um, Statistic, Phil Kutrimilidis, I don't know if you saw it on Twitter, Jose, but he, he tweeted that this was, the game against Barcelona was Real Madrid's deepest line of the season. Uh, I think it was something like, I mean, I'd have to, I'll look it up really quick. But on the flip side, it was also Barcelona's highest line of the season. So Real Madrid played deeper than they, they've had all season, and Barcelona played higher than they had all season. And, um, and uh, it was just... Part of that can be explained by just a lot of fatigue. Real Madrid are putting a lot of mileage on key players who've been playing a lot due to injuries, but also due to those the fact that those starters are in form and because you have to win all these games you're, you're playing against. So Zidane really wants to make sure he comes away with all three points. Um, but I but I I don't know if that's magically going to get solved against Liverpool. So I kind of envision this being Liverpool is going to get possession in Real Madrid's half if Thiago plays from the start and. Especially if Firmino plays. I thought they were actually lacking Firmino's presence against us in the first leg. Especially if he does play, um, then I think they'll even have more control in, in our half. And I think we're going to rely on, you know, the kind of 4-3-3 scheme with Asensio and Vinicius on the wings. I wonder, Jose, and like you brought up a good point, the Aston Villa thing is like, Aston Villa score first to start being dominated. And I'm not saying Real Madrid get dominated and score first, but there is a scenario where they don't see much of the ball, but they will punish Liverpool in transition, like they punished them in, in the first leg and also against Barcelona. But so do you see the game kind of heading that way, if you had to guess? 